Hey guys, this is Rick and welcome to Tech Talk. I haven't done a Tech Talk in a long, long time. Actually, I just did the first one and the reason for that was because I didn't have a good way to record my, soft, uh, my desktop. So uh, I bought this Corel video editing software and it came with a desktop capture and it works pretty good. Now in the first one we talked, I talked about Cheaty AI and I showed an example using the the uh, zombies in Minecraft. And the way I define Cheaty AI is basically uh, AI that looks at the code and determines how to move, how to react in the world environment. And if you remember uh, in that first video, you know, the uh, zombies, they just can pathfind directly to the village. I used a villager as bait and they could pathfind directly to the villager without ever having seen the villager or really even should know where the villager is. And that's cheaty AI because it's looking at the game code and pathfinding to it. It knows where the villager is without using uh, discovery. And, you know, as players, we have to use discovery. We have to actually walk a maze to find out what's inside the maze. Um, with cheaty AI, though, the monsters don't have to do that. And I said at the time I wanted to give an example of non cheaty AI because I implemented it in a game that I had written called uh, Deep Deadly Dungeons and I had used non cheaty AI. The AI in this in this game here uh, doesn't cheat. It basically uses the same methodology that you would use when you play a game. It uses discovery. So I thought I'd go ahead and just go over the code here a little bit and just kind of give you an example of how you can implement non cheaty AI. Now this is Free Basic. I used it. I use Free Basic to write all my games because it has a built-in graphics engine. You can do OpenGL with it. You can do DirectX with it. It's got a real nice. Uh, it, it is a Basic language, and I have a fondness for Basic because that was actually the first programming language I ever, I ever used back in the day. Uh, you know, it doesn't have all the fancy stuff that maybe C++ has, but uh, Free Basic is an object-oriented uh, native code compiler. It uh, compiles it down to ASM and then it uses the uh, new compiler to tools to uh, to compile it. So it's a native code compiler. Um, it is object oriented and there's uh, a whole number of uh, third party libraries that you can use with this. So it's, it's extremely powerful language. Definitely worth and it's free, of course, and it's definitely worth uh, messing around with. And, and, of course, it's in the basic language, very similar to Visual Basic. So uh, I had a lot of experience with Visual Basic. So I like this. I, I like to use it. I, I use C++ for uh, stuff as well. But as far as for making games and that kind of stuff, um, I, I prefer just using this because that way, you know, I can, uh, I can concentrate on doing the game without having to worry about trying to get the programming language to work which is sometimes it's it's tough using some of these other languages and using some of these third parties libraries to get them to work correctly but uh, using free basic is pretty simple so anyways let's get to the code here this is a uh, subroutine that I call in the game when it's time to to uh, roam the monsters I call it now uh, this is a turn-based game this is a uh, deep deadly dungeons is a roguelike game uh, procedurally generated dungeon crawler that you basically just go through and kill everything in sight and collect loot and build up your character. Pretty typical. It was the very first dungeon crawler I actually ever wrote, so uh, it's not great code, but it works, uh, and it was fairly popular in the time. It's real old. It needs to be rewritten, and that's on my list to do one of these days. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, the, the rogue monster here, uh, subroutine, actually implements the roaming and 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 ai of the uh the search ai of the monsters and each monster is held in a monster array as you can see here this level monster is a array of uh structures and uh, all the monster information is contained within this array so for each monster in the array we're going to do something and the first thing we do here is we look to see whether or not uh, we have line of sight to the player that's what this this uh function does here it, calc it calculates whether or not we have line of sight to the to the uh, player now you notice here we have a calc distance as well this calculates the distance from the from the uh, player to the monster and the reason we do that is because monster some monsters have different range of vision and we want to make sure that the monster can actually see the player 
So if the monster does see the player, we set the P-sided to true. In other words, we set that flag to true saying, yeah, we saw the player. And the monster has a memory, so it remembers, hey, that player was at that location. And then we build a path. And basically, just this build path here, and uh, we can look at it real quick. Let me go over here and uh, bring it up. This build path actually just uses the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, line function. Oh, I can't think of the guy's name that invented it at the time here. But it's basically just a line function where it creates a a line to the to the uh, player from the from the from the monster location to the player. It creates a line and stores each of those locations in an array, so that the monster knows that hey, the player was at this X and Y, and this is how I get to that X and Y. So it stores that information in the monster's memory. So it does that if it sees the player. So and then it, and then of course you know. Uh, it goes on in that loop there once that's finished once that path is built then it goes down here and checks to see if it's if the player's been sighted now of course we we set it false first so you know if if p sighted isn't true in this case then we don't see the player so it, this if statement here drops it down to down here uh, where we do the last side of the player. But let's look at what we do here if we actually see the player. So we've seen the player. So now we check, I check the monster HP and get a percentage. And that's basically just the percentage based on the flea property of the monster. If the monster's HP is at a certain point, then, and this, the, you get a percentage amount, you compare it to the flea. And if, uh, you know, if the percentage is, I think it's less than or equal to the flea value, then the monster will try to get away from the player rather than try to engage the player because the, the monster wants to try to, to heal up. And basically the monster will look for an open tile that is farthest away from the player that it can possibly get to. And if it does, then it will go ahead and move. See, if open tile, then, you know, uh, it'll, it'll move to that location and then it goes through and does a regeneration because monsters in this game regenerate just like the player does. Okay, so if we're not fleeing, then we drop down here. Is the player in range? Now, each monster has a particular range associated with it. Some of them are melee monsters. Some of them are uh, ranged. Some of them have melee attacks and some of them have ranged attacks. Some of them have both. The ranged attacks are favored over the melee attacks if the monster has a melee attack or a ranged attack. So, so we check the distance in the attack range. We check the percentage on it based on the intelligence of the monster. Okay, and then we get the uh, we get the coordinate for it. We check for an open tile, and. Uh, Okay, so if the if the distance is less than the attack range here, forgot to mention that. <laughs> if the distance is less than the attack range here, then the monster is going to try to move within attack range, and that's what this set of code does. And it does the same thing. It looks for the open tile, and then it goes down, moves into that uh, open tile, new open tile, and then it does the uh, attack attacks the player, and then we just redraw the map at this place. If the distance is equal to the attack range, now this attack range could be, like I said, melee range or uh, could be a, a ranged attack range, if you will. So if they're equal, let's do the attack. So we have, if it's less than the attack range, we do the attack. If it's equal, then we do the attacks. Okay, the only other option is that it's the, the distance is greater than the attack range. And so here we're going to... Uh, try to move closer to the player here and then uh, uh, because he's not within the attack range right so he's going to try to move closer to the player and then he just does a monster heal which is what they always with the monsters does the regeneration now this uh, minus one here basically says that you know if we if we lose the player then we're going to reset that and we're going to go back through the process on the next loop up here 
when we go through and, and try to uh, figure out what's going on. So, okay. So, this is the, if we see the player, this whole section of code is here if we see the player. So distance is less than the attack. I guess I should mention here, if the distance is less than the attack range, this the monster is trying to move to the attack range. Okay, he's he's trying to move back to the attack range. He's not trying to move. I think I said move closer to the player. Actually, what he's what the monster at this point is trying to do is move to his attack range, whatever that attack range is, because that's the optimal range for this monster to attack. So that's what he's doing here. Okay, and then if he's if he's um, equal to, he's just going to attack. Otherwise, he's going to move closer to the player. So I think I kind of got that little mixed up there, but that's how that works. Okay, so we lost sight of the player. So what the monster can do, which would happen if we if we, you know, executed this piece of code, for example. So we've lost sight of the player. So now we're going to listen for the player, and each monster ha has a can hear. And every time the player moves, it generates a sound map. Now, when he generates a sound map, the monster can hear that sound map. And the sound map basically is just a, uh, you know, a map generated based on, <coughs> excuse me, is a map generated based on the what the player is wearing as far as armor and equipment and that kind of stuff. And, you know, the more noisy the player is, the bigger the map. And so, the, you know, monsters can pick up on that. And so what they do is they'll listen, and if they get the uh, if they get the uh, if they hear that if they hear the player, then they can use that as a target to move to. So can't hear the player at this point, so we go to the last location. Let, let me go back up here to listen to the player. The sound map is generated in such a way that it goes from high to low, so it'll start say at level 10 and then it'll go to 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, kind of in that, in that way. So the monster can actually track the player by going from sound level 1 to sound level 2 and from sound level 2 to sound level 3 and so on. That's how he can track the player by listening for the player. But if he can't hear it, remember we generated a path up here and so what the monster's going to do is he's going to say, hey, I saw that player at that last location here, so I'm going to move to that last location. And lastly, if the, if the monster doesn't have a path, you know, let's say he's reached that last location and there's nothing there, which is what this piece of code does here, resets the player location. So he's just going to move in a kind of a random direction at this point because he doesn't really have any other option to go to. And he'll just kind of move in a in a you know in a random direction to a new open tile and look for and you know again look and listen for the player and go through this whole process. So in a nutshell, that's how this that's how this uh, roaming AI works for for this particular game here. Now, as you as you can see in 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 the code here. It's all based on whether or not the monster can see the player or the monster can hear the player. You know, if it's down here where it can't hear him and it can't see him, it's not looking at the player uh, location. It's, you know, it's saying, hey, I don't know where, where this guy is, so you know what, I'm just going to kind of roam around for a while and, and see if I can hear him or see if I can see him. So it's not pathfinding directly to the player you know if the game was directly pathfinding to the player then we wouldn't even need all of this code here we just basically say we basically just execute this code right here calculate the distance you know and build a path I mean that's it right there and that's kind of what the zombies do in in Minecraft you know they they calculate the distance and they build a uh, path they, you know they use a a star or whatever it is pathfinding and they go right to the player or right to the um, villager or whatever but as you can see here I didn't implement it this way the monsters do basically what you would do if you were a player um, you know you could you have to roam around the map to find stuff in the map and that's exactly what the monsters have to do as well they have to roam around and look and, and listen 
And if they see you, they're going to remember where you were at and going to go to that last location. And generally speaking, once they lock on to you, once they see you, it sometimes can be kind of tough to get away from because they're going to move to that last location. And, and if it's down a long corridor, they may see you again and say, oh, okay, he was down there. They'll remember that location and then head off in that direction. Plus, they can hear you. And so, you know, if you're in a room and you're generating a lot of noise and the monster's out in the corridor, you know, within earshot, he's going to say, hey, there's somebody in there. Let me go investigate. And he'll follow that, that's, that, um, that sound map. He'll follow that sound map right to the player. So, uh, and of course, you know, I also implement in this the flea mechanism as well. So you can beat on a monster and beat on a monster. You know, in Minecraft, you beat on the zombie, beat on the zombie, he'll ultimately die. In this game, you know, you can fight a monster to a certain point and the monster's going to say, Hey, I've had enough. I want to, I need to regenerate and he'll take off and try to, try to get away from you. So it adds another dimension to the game. So this, I think, is a, you know, not a great example. It's pretty simplistic, really, as far as the, actual mechanism or or what is going on but when you pl when you actually play against this sort of ai it, it brings a level of realism to the game that you don't normally get and it's real interesting and i had a lot of people comment on the on the monster ai in this game and how interesting it was to play because they'll be fighting a monster and suddenly it'll take off and try to get away and if you're chasing them all of a sudden you know there's two other monsters that see you and they'll start moving in so you get this real dynamic because you have these behaviors that you've implemented in these monsters these basically are behaviors that the monster will will uh perform as it's going through this and of course then you know when it when you have the uh attack uh code and then you know there's a whole bunch of different stuff within the attack code itself um, you know so the the this is just this is just the roaming part of it where it's trying to find the player there's there's another level in the actual attack code where it will try to pick the best attack for doing different things or you know based on intelligence and those kind of things so adds another little layer onto it but uh, yeah, I think this is this is a good example, a simple example, and one that you can readily see of non-cheaty AI. And I think more games need to implement non-cheaty AI. It's easy to it's easy to implement cheaty AI, and you know because you don't have to do a lot of work. Uh, you know, there are some cases where you know they do it for speed or whatever, but it's still cheaty AI. The game, the monsters are still looking at the game code, and they have access to information you don't have. Whereas in this example, excuse me, sorry. In this example, you know, the monster basically has the same information you have. It has to discover the information. It has to look for you. It has to listen for you. And then, it, you know, it has memory. So if it does see you at some point in the game, it'll remember and try to track you down. And, you know, that's the... But it does it in a way that it doesn't look at the game code. It's not cheating it's doing it just like you do it just a, just like you as a player have to play the game it's playing the game the same way and i'm a i am a big proponent of non cheaty ai and non cheat in in games as well i think the game has to play fair with you you know because you're limited by what you can do in the game so the game should be playing fair with you as well so but there you have it non cheaty ai well i appreciate you watching and i will talk to you again next time goodbye